Greetings, JC here for Interface, and this time around we're going to take a look at the Shure M25C Phono Cartridge. The M25C is a half-inch head shell mounting cartridge. It has a conical stylus and it is able to be back cued. You can scratch with it if you want to DJ. It's Shure's entry-level professional cartridge. It was only after I set out to do the review of the M25C that I discovered that Shure has dropped this particular cartridge from its current lineup. However, the market is absolutely saturated with M25Cs, and they're available at many places on the internet. Taking a look at the specifications for the M25C, you'll see they're quite impressive for such a low-priced cartridge. One of the first things that jumped out at me was the tracking force, anywhere between 1.5 and 3 grams. This is light for most professional cartridges. Conical-tipped stylus cartridges are usually expressed in ranges for the VTF and not a recommended number. This is because it all depends on what application you're using them in, whether you're using them just to play back records or whether you're using them to scratch and back cue in like a radio studio or a nightclub. The ranges of VTF forces for most professional cartridges are quite high. Most Stanton cartridges need at least 4 grams to track properly, and some Audio-Technica professional cartridges track as high as 7 grams. That's a bit heavy for daily playback of vintage vinyl. However, the conical tipped stylus offers smoother playback on slightly worn mono and stereo vintage records uh, from the 50s all the way up through the 80s and a conical tip stylus is recommended for anybody who is collecting 45s. The M25C comes with lots of great accessories like an extra set of wires for the head shell, there's also a stylus cleaning brush. There's a 3 gram weight for uh, getting the M25C to work with older tone arms that require a heavier cartridge. Also, you get a user's guide, all the mounting hardware, and a stylus guard. My M25C arrived in this very unique tubular package with rubberized ends that come off to allow you to access the uh, cartridge and the accessories inside. As promised, the M25C came with a lot of accessories. Not only did you get the stylus brush, the head shell wires, and the head shell weight promised, but also a small screwdriver was included. There are three sets of screws at different lengths for mounting this cartridge in different head shells. There are a couple of two millimeter spacers, and of course, all of the nuts and washers necessary to mount it up. Installing the M25C was very straightforward and easy to do. Anybody who has any experience putting cartridges on half-inch head shells should have no trouble installing the M25C. Time to get down to the nitty-gritty and talk about the audio performance of the Shure M25C. I mounted it on my Denon DP23F turntable and tracked it at 2 grams. It turned out to be a mixed bag. I must admit that I, I had high hopes for the audio quality from the M25C, seeing how its cousin, the M92E, performs so incredibly well, even though it actually sells for lower than the $30 average price for the M25C. It did turn out to be a mixed bag, though. In some aspects, uh, the M25C performed quite well, like tracking. It played everything that I threw at it. It did not miss track. There was no hint of a skip anywhere, even on warped records, and it did quite well, so I gave it a 9 in that department. As far as sibilance is concerned, that is uh, the high-end splatter you'll hear sometimes uh, from uh, many turntable cartridges. It performed quite well again, with only the slightest hint of a hard S on uh, some very high velocity records. Still, it performed better than uh, a lot of the higher priced cartridges I've tried from Stanton and Ortofon, so that was impressive. Unfortunately, as far as sheen and detail were concerned in the high end, it didn't do quite well, uh, quite that well. Uh, the sheen factor was only a 6. I was uh, pleasantly surprised to hear a lot of high end coming out of the cartridge. However, it didn't have a lot of detail and it almost sounded like it was slightly crushed, so that's why I only gave it a 5 for detail. Bass response was quite good. I gave it a 7 simply because... As we go down to the tone, which would be the overall sound coming from the cartridge, you'll notice that I said it was tubby. The uh, 
bass response tends to emphasize the upper mids or rather the upper bass and lower mid range uh, which gives it a tubby effect but the bass is uh, quite clean and very pronounced so i gave it a seven as far as that's concerned and uh, the overall tone i gave a five simply because of that bump in the upper bass and lower mids on some records that can be quite boomy the stereo separation was a big disappointment with the M25C. It's rated for 20 dB, but the stereo image was really quite narrow and didn't have a lot of detail to it. Uh, that may improve as the cartridge breaks in over time, uh, but the initial uh, response that I got from the cartridge was quite disappointing in the department of stereo. Very narrow stereo image. As far as balance between left and right is concerned, my cartridge failed miserably. It was 3 or 4 dB hot in the left channel. At first I thought it was something in how I had it wired up, but after some troubleshooting I came to uh, understand that it was the cartridge itself that was this far out of balance. Exactly why that is, I'm not really sure. Uh, maybe it's just uh, a lack of quality control on Shure's part. And finally, for ruggedness, I gave the cart a uh, 8 because it is a well-constructed cartridge and it could uh, stand up to some pretty heavy use in a nightclub or a radio station. I would assume this cartridge would probably last for the entire full one year of the warranty uh, before you would run into any structural difficulty with it. The Shure M25C is enticing because it would appear to be a solid, low-cost alternative if you were looking for a professional audio cartridge. Unfortunately, it just does not deliver on the audio quality that Shure is usually known for. The audio quality from the Shure M25C is disappointing, especially when compared to other offerings from Shure. The slightly more expensive Shure M447 is a critically acclaimed cartridge. Its conical tipped stylus is great for scratching and back cueing and daily playback. And the M44G has a very low tracking force range. Uh, that particular cart can track at 1.25. So if uh, you are looking for a professional cartridge with a conical tip stylus, I would definitely recommend going on and biting the bullet and buying the M447 from Shure. Another alternative is the Shure M92E, which is an elliptical stylus cartridge. It, you can't back cue it, but uh, if you're just going to be playing back records, the audio quality from the M92E is uh, stunning, and it works on either a half-inch head shell or it can be mounted directly in a T4P P-mount tone arm. Unfortunately, there is one drawback to the adapter in that it makes the cartridge a bit taller. And if your particular tone arm doesn't have a height adjustment, this may present an issue. But as long as you can adjust the height, uh, you can definitely get extremely uh, good audio performance, especially at the price from the M92E. And another alternative for the M25C would be the Stanton 500 V3, which is uh, relatively inexpensive, costing somewhere around $50, depending on where you find it. This is a very good sounding cartridge with a lot of detail, and it features a spherical tip stylus that you can back cue and scratch with. And uh, the only disadvantage to the Stanton V3 500, uh, which is the latest version of the 500, is that uh, most people find that they have to track it at 4 grams to get proper tracking. I hope this review was helpful, especially if you are looking at options for your next Phono cartridge, the M25C. Although very enticing, turned out to be disappointing in the end, and it's probably a good thing that it is now discontinued from Shure. However, there are a ton of them out there on the market. For reviews just like this, be sure and check out the Interface YouTube channel. It's available at our website, live.scottydonline.com. And don't forget, Interface happens each Friday night, 7 o'clock Eastern, 4 o'clock Pacific. That's 12 midnight GMT, right here at live.scottydonline.com. For Interface, I'm JC. Yeah.